Hi everyone, it's the middle of December. What does that mean? New outlooks have been issued. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist from National Weather Service. We'll talk about the rest of December and the holiday week. Expected weather will look anything like what's shown on the screen. Uh, we'll also take a look at our current climate conditions and provide the latest outlook for winter 2023. Thanks for tuning in. Here are the key points we're going to talk about. The rapid start to the snowpack as developed recently. But consecutive three years in a row of dry weather, Northern California, two for SoCal. So out are we out of the woods yet yeah, for fire season? We'll talk about that. Cooler temperatures. Uh, that is common and we've seen that in La Nina years. However, for the rest of December holiday week, it could be warmer than average and dry. The latest outlook has been updated, still calling for drier than average despite the good start to the water year and the snowpack. Winter 2023 is still expected to have long dry periods, so less opportunities for consistent precipitation. December's been wet. We're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, the month of December, a really significant amount of precipitation across all of California. Purple shaded areas are over 10 inches of water. A lot of that was snow. Uh, it extended all the way down into Southern California uh, with the most recent rainfall, December 11th and 12th. Take a look at the scale on the right and match it to your location. This is for December only. What has the weather pattern been? Well, uh, if you look at the entire fall into December, we can see uh, it's been similar, except most recently more severe, more amplified, more dramatic, more up and down. Unusual blocking in the Pacific Ocean continues up to the Gulf of Alaska. What that typically means is few but significant storms for California and cold air. That's exactly what we've seen uh, with major storms in November and now in early December. Okay, the start of the water year is October 1st. On the map on the left, you can see that the blue shaded areas and the green shaded areas are above average or wetter than usual. That includes all of Southern California and all significantly parts of Central California. However, we're still missing out in Northern California. That's an ongoing trend over the past four years. Departure from normal temperatures on the right hand side and we're running about average but most areas are running a little bit below average with a lot of cool nights. Let's take a look at some of the numbers in details. A lot of numbers on here. The current water year is in green and the numbers are shown there. A good start to the water year even in Southern California. However, Next to the water year, you can see the total deficit. We have some large deficits over the past two years. An entire season for most areas is missing. An entire year of rainfall is missing in the past three years. You can take a look at our averages too on the right hand side. Okay, I wanna spend some time on this map, just updated the drought and the drought compared to this time last year. On the left hand side, Severe drought conditions still remain across most of California in orange shaded. Extreme drought across the heart or the central valley of California. Now, if you look back to a year ago, you can see that areas have improved, especially from the monsoon in Colorado and also from recent storms in the Pacific Northwest and to some extent in central California. However, it's obvious on this map that drought remains a major concern across most of the West and especially California. Okay, when we talk about drought, we need to talk about water supply. Let's take a look. In Southern California, the Diamond Valley Reservoir, the largest reservoir, continues to drop despite even recent rains and a wet summer. Levels are considerably lower than even this time last year. If we look deeper into the Colorado system, we can see that despite the significant monsoon wet summer, the levels are again starting to drop and approaching 
all-time lows again. All right, in California, we have to talk about snowpack in addition to water supply. This is our potential water supply for next year. Starting off at 200% of average is fantastic. It's even faster than last year, December 2021. So this is the start, and it's only December, but a significant major snowpack is at least now in place in California. If you look at precipitation as a whole in California, and especially in the Sierra Nevada, where the largest reservoirs in the state are located, you can see this year has started off wet. Uh, it didn't start off as early as last year overall. That started off October 2021. But this year in December, we've really made up ground, and we are overall average for the Sierra Nevada even though the snowpack is two times average, the water content is about average as shown in the blue shaded and the arrow area. You can take a look at other years to compare. Such as 2016-2017, the wettest year on record, which was even wetter than the El Nino 82-83. You guessed it, 2016-2017 was La Nina. Again, here's what it looks like for the water year so far, since October 1st. The green shaded areas, the areas we just talked about with the significant snowpack, southern Sierra Nevada, much above average, but extends all the way to the coast in central California and even into parts of southern California, where a really wet start to the water year so far. Unfortunately, this map shows the problem. The past three years and the deficits. Most of California is in the orange and red, which is between 50 and 80 percent, or a half to two-thirds of what it should have received in that three-year period. So this has resulted in those deficits that we talked about earlier statewide. This here shows the predictability in terms of the odds of the water year since October 1st coming out near average or 100% of average. And you can see across most of California, the odds are low, 20 to 40% odds of that occurring. Now that's not the case for most of the West, Intermountain West, Great Basin, Montana, uh, odds are really good for having at least some of the mountain areas and even the desert areas being wet. This product is provided by the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes. Now, the continued drought. This is the latest prediction from the Climate Prediction Center. And unfortunately, the brown shaded areas indicate drought persisting. It's pretty much all of California, drought persisting. Um, the drought may improve some in the areas in lighter brown shaded like parts of the Intermountain West and the Pacific Northwest. Okay, when we talk about drought, we also need to talk about fire weather and fuel moisture. Back in November with three Santa Ana winds, we had fuel moistures to drop down to near critical levels again. However, with the rain in December, that has brought us right back up where we should be and need to be, and even above average. So recent rainfall was maybe not significantly helpful to any drought or water supply, but it was helpful to fire weather conditions. So what's been the problem over the past few years? It's the weather pattern. If you look back in 2019-20, all the way to just last year and the current year, you can see upper level ridge of high pressure over the Eastern Pacific. It's not supposed to be there in that shape, fashion, or strength. This results in a very amplified weather pattern, pushing most of our storms to the north and giving us less opportunity in California. We still get heavy rain and heavy snow, but not the amounts we need for the entire water year. This has been a persistent pattern starting in 2019-2020 which was an El Nino year. Take a look at this. You can see last year, most of the storms 
Instead of going into California, we're steered to the north with only few opportunities in California, especially early on in the year. If you look at the past two years, pretty much the same thing um, with 2021 water year being the worst, where storms really turned and were steered into the Pacific Northwest only. The weather pattern steers these storms. We can't forget about last year. Even though last year started off wet, January to March of 2022 was the driest on record in the deep shaded red areas. Remarkably dry. More snow fell in Southern California than Mammoth. What is the state of the ocean or La Nina? Well, it's there. Latest image shows La Nina is in place now for the third year in a row, but in Central Pacific and even parts of the Northern Pacific. And this is a reflection of the weather pattern I just showed you. The water is much warmer than it should be. So we really have polar opposites going on here. La Nina locked in place, the cold phase along the tropics and much warmer conditions, uh, in some cases very warm conditions in the Central and Northern Pacific. Just a recap of La Nina. It's a reversal of the normal trade winds along the equator, and it's a way for the ocean to uh, return cooler water along the tropical areas and balance things out. Okay, the problem with La Nina this year is that it's locked into place. You can see we don't have many years where three years in a row you have La Nina like we're experiencing now. Um, you have to go all the way back to 2001 to see that stretch and it even extends back into the mid 70s where there was a period so conditions like this at least for la nina the cold phase are unusual what do we usually see with la nina this is not a forecast but this is what we usually see drier than average conditions across most of california for temperatures though we typically see cooler than average and especially in the Pacific Northwest, where you get more cold air diving down from the north. Now, in a triple La Nina, three years in a row, like we're experiencing now, we have few to compare to, and we typically see much cooler than average conditions across California, but we also see the tendency to be maybe average, if not a little bit drier than average, even in three years in a row of La Nina. And that's because there's a mixture of wet La Ninas and dry La Ninas. What's the outlook for Christmas week? Well, the weather pattern looks like it's going to shift, but shift in a direction that puts us on the warm, dry side, the Santa Ana side. Drier and warmer conditions across most of California expected for Christmas week. Meanwhile, a significant cold outbreak enters into the Central Plains, the Great Lakes, and maybe even parts of the Mid-Atlantic. If we look further out in December, the indications are unfortunately drier than average conditions for much of California. We see cool conditions initially, and then we see those warm Santa Ana type conditions with building upper level ridge across California in late December. If we look at it into January, a further outlook into 2023, unfortunately, potential continued dry for much of California and a little bit warmer than average. The Pacific Northwest looks like the main area to get some active weather in early January and, of course, the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic region. The outlook for January was just released and it reflects a lot what I just talked about. Drier than average conditions in SoCal. Still the potential for a couple storms in Northern California. Wetter conditions though remaining way up in the Pacific Northwest and Montana. Warmer temperatures due to the dry period and upper level ridge across California. This is the outlook for January. Now the latest outlook for the rest of the winter, January through March, is shown here, and unfortunately not much change. 
Storm track persisting across far northern California, making it wet for the Pacific Northwest and the Ohio Valley. But unfortunately, central southern California missing out on a lot of these storms. This is January through March, a critical period for California to gain and maintain precipitation. Uh, temperatures warmer than average for SoCal, but because of the active storminess and the jet stream sagging across the Pacific Northwest, cooler in that region. Computer models show the same thing. A lot of these computer models are used to help generate that long range forecast and the indications are almost entirely that central Southern California would fall short in a critical period January through March 2023. Doesn't mean we won't see big storms or even some heavy rain and heavy snow, but a three month period where most of our precipitation occurs is a very critical time uh, for drought and water supply. So we can't miss out these opportunities, otherwise we fall short, which is the general prediction. All right, recap. Uh, fast start to the water year. Three consecutive years of dry in Northern California, two for SoCal. Cooler temperatures are common in La Nina, but because of the pattern shift, we do expect warmer and drier conditions in late December with Santa Ana. Now the rest of the winter, doesn't look promising, at least for Southern California, drier and milder than average. Doesn't mean it won't rain still, like we saw in December and early November, big storms can occur even in dry years. Uh, the winter, however, overall will have long periods of dry conditions, so less opportunities to make ground on the drought. Make sure you check out weather.gov for the latest information. This is where you can find climate information, observations, and ultimately all forecasts uh, at your fingertips. And then most importantly, any watch warning advisory that the National Weather Service issues. Thanks for tuning in. Also be sure to check out the latest hazard outlook at weather.gov or the link shown here. You can follow current weather conditions such as temperature, wind, and precipitation at the links shown here. Have a great rest of 2022.